AI is already rewriting the rules of research, and if you think you can ignore it, you can't. But here's the thing, after talking around the world about AI tools, it is not about misuse, rather it's about resistance. Academics and institutions that ignore the advances in AI are missing out on a huge opportunity and there will be a bigger gap between those that use it and those that don't and institutions that ban their researchers from using it are going to suffer in the long run. And in this video, we're going to talk about the AI future, what it looks like and how you and your research institution should be embracing it. When I've talked around the globe now about AI tools for academia and research, people always say, what about the skills lost? What about the skills that were required in the past to do a literature review, to do research in general? Where are they going to go? And look, I'm going to tell you this. I am all for losing skills if we no longer need them. We don't need anymore to learn about cursive writing in school. We now don't need to learn how to write a first draft of a peer-reviewed paper. It doesn't mean that that is the sort of like, you know, piece of work we submit for peer review, but producing a first draft is now done for you. And the thing is, is that I see this not as a skill loss, but as a skill shift or refocus. Now we can spend more time doing the things that actually make our research better. Not producing the perfect prose, but rather thinking about the research we should be doing, analyzing the data, presenting that data in graphs, in tables, coming up with research stories. Those things now should be where we focus our skills and the training of the next PhD students because you can now put data into an AI agentic tool and just get a first draft of a paper back. It means we need to train people to critically analyze and sort of like break down that uh, paper that AI produces. Now, that doesn't mean that we're just gonna sort of like accept what AI gives us on face value and go, oh, thanks very much everyone, I'm now a researcher. The skills are gonna change and we need to move with how the technology changes. That is the first thing. We're not losing skills, we're shifting the skill focus because some things now are just done for us, love it. Pretty much after every single talk that I've given, an academic, normally an older academic, comes up to me and says, well, you see, back in my day, we had to do this. And they talk about how they had to suffer to get their PhD. And it's weird. We've got this sick obsession with suffering in academia. Like, is it really a PhD if you haven't suffered? Yeah, it is. The thing is, technology evolves. And the thing is, is that the older sort of like academics don't see a PhD as valid unless you suffer in like this sort of like really massive existential way. But now most of that suffering, most of the stuff, most of the manual process of going to get papers, to search the papers, to deciding what papers you should read and which ones you should focus on is now done for you. And we have this sick obsession with the fetishization of academia and that needs to stop. People are going to suffer still to get their PhD, but they're going to suffer in new ways that they didn't suffer in the past. So it's not about eliminating the suffering, it's about just changing the way that people suffer. Now we're going to suffer of like producing a uh, document with AI, like a literature review with AI. Now the suffering is going to be going through that and making sure that everything is correct. Getting out of the headspace of trying to make people suffer the way we suffered when we did our PhD is only going to harm the progress and the advancement of research given the new AI tools that are available to academics and researchers. So stop trying to make people suffer in your way, make them suffer in a new magical way. <laughs> That's where we're going. <laughs> Stay around to the end of this video because I've got a message for research institutions that you don't want to miss. Universities and institutes now have to change what success looks like. Now, in the past, producing a thesis, producing a literature review, producing a peer-reviewed paper was kind of like saying, okay, you've succeeded, tick. You've suffered through the process of producing a, a thesis or five peer-reviewed papers if you're doing PhD by publication. Now that's gonna have to change a little bit and institutions are pooping their pants because they now need to redefine what success looks like given their kind of um, institutional structure.
success no longer looks like being able to produce loads of words on a page because that has changed, that is now easy. What actually lies under that and the, what the words mean is where they should really focus, like what success looks like. Having a robust academic conversation and being marked on that is probably far better than just saying, oh, I produced a thesis now, yeah, give me a PhD. Academics and research institutions and universities are scared. And it makes sense that they're scared because it really has changed the foundation of what learning outcomes look like. Should we now be focused much more on the process of someone's learning, on how well they can um, sort of like uh, interrogate the literature, how well they hold themselves in an academic context, in a conversation, in um, a presentation that they give. Those are the things that AI can't help with. It's the human-human interaction and uh, what does success look like for a PhD? That will be decided and arguably it will look much, much different, but the institutions and the universities are completely resistant to this change at the moment. They're still sort of like putting in guardrails, being like, you can only use AI in these ways, you should use it in these ways, otherwise you're cheating. The people and the institutions that get rid of those guardrails quicker and allow people to use AI to its fullest potential, but change the way that they assess and decide whether or not learning has taken place has to change with it. And uh, yeah, that's up for them to decide. I don't have answers for you here, but I've seen so many research institutes just be scared and say, no, that can't happen. No, oh no, we're losing our grip on what, you know, people pay us for. That's the other thing. These research institutions, people pay them a lot of money to get a bit of paper at the end, and now they have to rethink uh, all of the ways in which they decide someone is worthy of that piece of paper. It's going to be tough, but they need to do it right now and stop being so bloody scared. <laughs> At the end of this video, I've got a dire warning for research institutions that I don't think you'll want to miss. Mark my words, AI literate researchers will thrive. Now, looking forward, they can only thrive as much as their research institutions allow them to thrive with the use of AI. I was at a talk recently and the university's response to AI is not saying, use it in these ways. It's like, here is a tool that's capable of doing amazing things, but you can only use it in these very minuscule ways because it scares us and we don't like the way it's progressing. And oh no, like maybe it's easier for you to do things that we couldn't do in the past. Those are the issues that we're facing. So researchers that embrace AI to do the grunt work of the writing, like we're still focusing on um, the results. We should still be focusing on the experimental design. We should be imagining like, what does this AI allow us to do now? Is it more complex studies? Is it um, more complex data analysis? Like all of those things are opened up by AI tools and the future of agentic AI, specifically for research, like Google co-sciences, which is just incredible. But the problem is, is that we are not allowed to use those tools to their full potential because of scared old academics running research institutions. If we allowed researchers right now in like research institutions and also like publishers that are accepting peer reviewed papers for publication, they're like, oh, you can only use AI in these very structured ways. Not that they can test to see how you've used AI, by the way, like all of that means that we're just fighting the future. The future is using these tools to their fullest potential and using our own knowledge to interrogate the output of AI and make sure it is truthful, it is exactly how we want to present our research story, but use it as a tool to get there quicker, faster, more efficiently, and without all of the sort of like drafting efforts. Like, we will say in the future that the way we created papers was by mashing our meat fingers into plastic keyboards to create stuff. Smash, mash, 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 mash. Like we did that, that's what these were for, but now we don't need to do that. We need to move with where AI is taking us and that is through 
a, a process of generating content, generating papers, generating literature reviews, and that's where it kind of like stops at the moment. In the future, I'm sure we'll have AI tools that actually help us fact check, that help us do all of the steps that sort of like come after that first text generation. But we are not allowing our researchers to use it to its full potential, and I, I ask of you, research institutes, please stop trying to ban it and say you can only use it in this very tiny little way. Start exploring it with your researchers. How do your researchers want to use AI tools, agentic AI tools, the new AI tools for academia and research? They are incredible, but you are literally tying their hands together if they cannot use them to their full potential. And that will have long lasting impact on your research ability in the future. Mark my words, researchers that use AI and are AI literate will thrive and there will be a bigger gap between those that use AI and those that sort of like are resistant to change. And once that gap's formed, it's gonna be hard to close it as AI progresses. So institutions, that's my warning to you. If you like this video, go check out this one where I talk about how smart academics use AI for AI writing.